Tonight, NTA Women Journalist and Nawaj owes a one-day training on gender-based reporting. Head of Civil Service of the Federation evaluates ongoing IPPIS verification exercise. Plus, correspondent has raised the importance of immunization. Good evening and thank you for joining us on the news. I am Ibn Mizitimiola with details of the highlights and other stories. Ahead of the November 11 of second governorship in election in Bios, Kogi and Emu, the need for massive voter education has been advocated. Director, National Orientation Agency, Bios State, Patricia Madumezi stated this while reacting to the expectation of the upcoming Bios State governorship election. Voter education, as the name implies, is the act of providing relevant specific information about election and voting process. As bias counts down to November 11 of circle governorship election, political parties and their candidates are busy aligning and realigning, receiving endorsements from individuals and groups, and neck deep with political meetings. A noticeable drawback is the lack of voter education, a key factor in the election process. Inform people about their party logos, on how people can be able to identify their various parties. By also state, with 2,244 polling units spread across a peculiar terrain, as is share of the populace that needs to be enlightened about the voting process. And there should not snap people voting or share money in the presence of uh, other voters. It's an opportunity for them to make their choice, vote for the candidate of their choice. And if they don't know this, they won't come out. They also need to make them to understand that their vote will count, because that's what INEC has assured. The National Orientation Agency, as part of its mandate, has flagged off its enlightenment campaign to sensitize the populace against election violence. Let there be peace in Bayasa. That is what we are asking. That during this election, we don't need blood. We don't want to see blood on our street. We want to see every man and woman, youths, coming out with their voter's card to vote like responsible citizens. Election is no war, but an opportunity for citizens to make informed choices at the polls. In Yenagua, Ebinimi Zitimiola, NTN News. Less than two weeks to the 2023 of Circle Bioso State Governorship election, the candidates for various political parties are already reeling out their manifestos. These manifestos are expected to contain their policy plans, a sense of what the electorate should expect from the administration should they win the elections. But beyond the manifestos, Biosons are yearning for leaders intentional about the holistic development of the state, especially at a time when they are dealing with social economic challenges. Bratwai Preawi has the details. No tool encapsulates the ideals and priorities of the candidates and their parties like the manifesto. Ideally, a manifesto is a compilation of the broad vision, development philosophy, ideological learning, and sector-specific policy options that a political party intends to pursue once elected. With the November 11 governorship election around the corner, Candidates of political parties are already jostling from place to place to converse for support in what is known as campaign rally. The incumbent, Governor Doya Diri of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the major opposition, Chief Timipri Silva of the APC, and Odengs Eradri of the Labour Party, amongst other candidates, have been appealing to Biosans to buy into their candidature with promises to deliver on their promises. Some others are wary of some of these promises, and so they are cautioning candidates of political parties not to deceive the people, but strive in consonance with their promises since there is no official manifestos made public for the electorate to hold on to after the elections. They are more committed to what they can get from public office, and that is the major problem. If they are committed to the growth and development of democracy, they would want to implement some of the contents of their manifestos. But we are not seeing that. They just use the manifestos as a platform of deceit to deceive gullible Nigerians and ride to power. 
Once they're in power, they do not draw up any plan that will be in consonance with the manifesto they have promised. The present administration said continuity, and so it was continuing with the previous administration's uh, projects. Yeah, to a large extent, some of these projects, like the roads and uh, all of that, have been ongoing. But there are other issues that are bedeviling the, 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 the state. That, so we are calling on politicians generally to begin to look at the issue of manifesto as a key factor. Right from when Bayasa was created, no governor had been able to achieve 60% of their manifesto. None. But there is always one thing to look out for. Most of them, maybe this one there is peace during this time, this one there is teaching that even if it's not able to achieve those, and those are some of the things people decide to just vote for. But I want to say they don't keep to their manifesto. I want to advise them that don't tell us what you cannot do, tell us what you can do. At least 60 70 percent of what you promise, if you can do that, Belsa is going to move forward. The electorates are now contemplating on which of the campaign promises they are to believe and vote without relying on sentiments, since there is no documentary manifestos made public for electorate appraisal and in the November 11 governorship election in the state. In Yenegua, Baratwai Pre Awe, NTA News. You're watching the news reaching you from NTA Channel 28, Yenegua. Still to come, medical experts call for complete immunization dose for children. Wife of Nigeria's President Onuremi Tinimu felicitates with former First Lady Mrs. Patience Jonathan on her birthday. Good people of Bice State, November 11th is the election. Therefore, let us all come out and cast our ballot for our preferred candidates. Election is not a do or die affair. Avoid violence. Avoid stealing a national ballot box. Avoid fighting. Election is no war. Do not sell your vote or mortgage your future. Allow free, fair, peaceful elections. Allow your vote to count. Make sure you go out and vote your choice of candidate wisely. Do not kill innocent citizens for position or power. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, Yenagua. My good people of Bayelsa State, make you hear my voice and hear me well, well. Another governorship election don't come again. When everybody Baba. will come out go vote their choice for who Baba. will be the next governor of the state. I beg all of you as you go vote, make you shine your eyes well, well. Make you not tip tip by Lord Box. Make you not fight. Election not be war. Make you not scatter, scatter any property. Now we all go suffer them when time come. Make you not cause any katakata or wahala. Make you let the election be free, fair, and peaceful. On that day, when be 11 November 2023, make you let your vote count. Now, bring you this message. Thank you for staying with the NTA. And to some health matters now, immunization is an essential cause and effective strategy to reduce child mobility and mortality. However, achieving child immunization coverage remains a challenge in Nigeria. Diane Kume Ulolo in this report engaged some public health experts on the benefits of these essential exercises and factors responsible for zero or misdoses or vaccination of children in Nigeria. No tool encapsulates the ideals and priorities of the candidates and their parties like the manifesto. Ideally, 
A manifesto is a compilation of the broad vision, development philosophy, ideological learning, and sector-specific policy options that a political party intends to pursue once elected. With the November 11 governorship election around the corner, candidates of political parties are already jostling from place to place to converse for support in what is known as campaign rally. The incumbent, Governor Doya Diri of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the major opposition, Chief Tumipri Silva of the APC, and Odengs Eradri of the Labour Party, amongst other candidates, have been appealing to Biosans to buy into their candidature with promises to deliver on their promises. Some others are wary of some of these promises, and so they are cautioning candidates of political parties not to deceive the people but strive in consonance with their promises since there is no official manifestos made public for the electorate to hold on to after the elections. They are more committed to what they can get from public office and that is the major problem. If they are committed to the growth and development of democracy, they would want to implement some of the contents of their manifestos but we are not seeing that. They just use the manifestos as a platform of deceit to deceive gullible Nigerians and ride to power. Once they're in power, they do not draw up any plan that will be in consonance with the manifesto they have promised. As the President of the Nation said continuity, and so it was continuing with the previous administration's uh, projects. Yeah. To a large extent, some of these projects like the roads and uh, all of that have been ongoing. But there are other issues that are bedeviling the, 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 the state. That, so we are calling on politicians generally to begin to look at the issue of manifesto as a key factor. Right from when Bayasa was created, no governor had been able to achieve 60% of their manifesto. None. But there is always one thing to look out for. Most of them, maybe this one there is peace during this time, this one there is teaching that even if it's not able to achieve those, and those are some of the things people decide to just vote for. But I want to say they don't keep to their manifesto. I want to advise them that don't tell us what you cannot do, tell us what you can do. At least 60 70 percent of what you promise, if you can do that. Belsa is going to move forward. The electorates are now contemplating on which of the campaign promises they are to believe and vote without relying on sentiments. Since there is no documentary manifestos made public for electorate appraisal and in the November 11 governorship election in the state. In Yenegua, Baratwai Pre Awe, NTA News. Next is business news with Blessing Joseph. The federal government is set to facilitate the use of mobile phones of Nigerians in the transfer of the 15 million households conditional cash transfer program. The president noted that the objective of the program is to lift many families out of poverty pending the time the fuel subsidy removal issue will be resolved. Subsequently, the Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee has recommended that government will engage the use of citizens' mobile phones to validate and ease the transfer of funds. The federal government is said to also put on hold multiple taxation in the informal sector, impeding the growth of small businesses in the country. In the liquefied petroleum market, gas marketers expressed their displeasure to the current high price of cooking gas, which has risen to 1,200 naira per kilogram cylinder. The NNPC has announced that the corporation is making efforts to increase the supply of cooking gas in the bid to bring down the rising price of gas in the country. In the parallel market, also known as the black market, Naira on Tuesday fell to a record low of 1,310 Naira per dollar following a strong demand. This represents 6.07% weaker than 1,235 Naira recorded at the close of trading on Monday. With business news, Blessing Joseph, NTN News. The First Lady of Nigeria, Olire Mitinibu, has congratulated former First Lady, Dame Patience Jonathan, as she celebrates her birthday today. The First Lady, in a message, felicitates with the former First Lady and pray God to grant her good health.
joy and long life. Mrs. Oluremi Tinebo wishes her more peaceful years filled with love, laughter and joy. And to end the news and recover stories that made headline. NTF Women Journalist Nawood has concluded one day training session on gender based reportage techniques. Head of Civil Service of the Federation evaluates the ongoing IPPIS verification exercise. You also heard on the news that our correspondent has read the importance of immunization as health experts stresses need for regular immunization for children. That has been the news. Thank you for your time. Good night.